If we look at city water that's treated with chlorine as an example, um, that in that case, as an example, that's created such imbalance. The chlorine at that level is not beneficial. There are times I know <laughs> that I've taken showers in cities and I can actually smell the chlorine. It's so dramatic um, and I can feel it on my skin. Now, obviously I might be a little more sensitive living here in the Great Mountain region. In today's environment, we have a lot of contaminants that we're finding in water, particularly groundwater. And what's more unsettling or disturbing is we're finding particles of medication, uh, hormone replacement therapy, uh, chemotherapy that consequently is reabsorbed by the, the person who's consuming it, and that's, that's a concern. Salt has been important since the beginning of time, or at least recorded time, because it's, used, it's been used for preserving foods. Its importance has been well demonstrated in documents and ancient writings, and we still find salt an important aspect of our health. When buying your salt, be aware that some manufacturers label their processed salt as sea salt. And you want to be more aware of how processed it is, has other ingredients added to it. Generally, natural salt, uh, earth salt is an example, or naturally salt, or natural salt from the sea that's through evaporation processes will oftentimes not be brilliantly white. In individuals that eat meat, really if it's balanced with vegetables and whole grains, everything should be good. And the one thing I do exercise to uh, exercise awareness of is just be aware that trans fats are, I'm not gonna say a little more difficult uh, on our health, but but the amount of trans fats that are consumed should be watched because there's a direct correlation with the amount of triglycerides, which is a blood fat that we have in our, in our circulatory system, our blood. And these tri triglycerides, when they elevate, they can create a situation called blood foaming, which can be damaging to the arterial wall. So you want to be a little more careful about uh, you know excessive consumption of trans fats speak now there's a whole variety of pesticides and and uh, mold uh, inhibitors so to speak and the mold inhibitors we use apple cider vinegar but with, uh, don't use white vinegar apple cider is the best generally so I put in it doesn't require really that much or, or as an example we're doing now in today's industry is we're synthesizing material that isn't found naturally and that gets to be problematic because our bodies have not evolved to deal with that as far as health wise so that's important to understand when we're talking about sugar so natural sugars as an example sucrose which is white sugar which as many of us know is derived from sugar cane and sugar beet Basically, it's had the nutrient component removed, which is molasses. And molasses is the nutrient component that has been extracted from the production of white sugar or sucrose. So with foods in general, what we do is we want to, to some degree, suggest, listen, are these alkaline forming or acid forming? And this plays a role when we talk about long-term conditions within the body. Basically, whole foods, I have a saying, <laughs> foods that are least touched by man are the healthiest for you. You walk into the produce section, you see that, as an example, uh, broccoli is laid out, maybe bundled with a rubber band. It's been harvested. It's least touched. It's prepared. It's put in a box. It gets to market. Where if you go to a section where we have very uh, uh, manipulated foods, such as box cake mixes, as an example, or sweet cereal, where uh, unsaturated fat would be something that has a double bond. Now, to even add more complexity to this, then we talk about loading these up with hydrogen. And many of you are familiar with things that are hydrogenated fats, if you remember the margarines and things like that that are solid at room temperature, 
That's done so by pumping hydrogen into these. So what we want to emphasize for you, basically, is even though you see a food component that, is, that says low fat, it doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy for you. If you see a food ingredient that says high fat, high omega-6 or whatever, that doesn't mean it's necessarily healthy for you. What happens with casein that's undigested is it's harder for the digestive system to function. In conditions such as diverticulitis, uh, which is the pouches within the large intestinal tract, these can actually be influenced by undigested proteins such as casein. Here's some examples from my clinical practice. Every individual that I personally have treated with uh, acne, if it's going to be cystic acne or even rosacea, which is adult acne, the acne clears up to a high degree and improves substantially when dairy products are removed from their diet. When using Teflon as an example, the residues from the components actually get into the food. And occasional application, if you go to a restaurant as an example, that's okay, but if it's continual exposure to these things, we really don't know for sure what long-term uh, effects will happen. As, an um, as we teach you these recipes, we want to make sure that we're allowing you to have something that's the most uh, deliverable and most effective in what we're dealing with, whatever type of pathology or what we're, um, what we're addressing.